Good evening, everyone. Today, we embark on a hearty journey illuminated by the unwavering spirit of India's most formidable daughter, Dr. Kiran Bedi, a name synonymous with grit, grace, and the relentless pursuit of justice. Dr. Bedi's story is a painting made with the shades of courage, conviction, and the unwavering belief in the power of transformation. From scaling the heights of the Indian police service to becoming the first woman lieutenant governor of Puducherry, Dr. Bedi's path has been one of defying boundaries and rewriting narratives. She's tackled corruption with an iron fist, pioneered community policing with a compassionate heart, and ignited a spark of hope in countless lives with her unwavering dedication to public service. But today, we seek the woman behind the uniform, the leader behind the policy, and the human behind the legend. We'll explore the crucible that forged her spirit, the triumphs that shaped her vision, and the challenges that honed her resilience. We listen to her gov insights on governors, maybe the fearless kind, her blueprint for a better tomorrow, and the lessons she's learned from a life lived on the edge, always pulling, pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So fasten your seatbelts as we embark on this conversation with a leader who's dared to dream, dared to defy, and dared to make a difference. This is more than a fireside chat. It's a journey of inspiration. <laughs> I... I now request our Dean of Students, Professor Satyanarayana and Gummadi, to felicitate Dr. Kiran Bedi. All right, ma'am, shall we begin the fireside chat? <laughs> so, ma'am, uh, I'd like to start just with about your early days. So, in your early days, you were a tennis player, I mean, you were a rising star at that. Uh, but in your 20s, you applied for the Indian Police Force. What brought you to public service? Such a radical change from your sports passion. So why, your question is, why did I be move on from tennis to police? Yes. Because they are compatible. Oh. Both need a racket. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, man. I was used to whacking the ball. <laughs> I was very, very used to whacking the ball and I had enough stamina to whack it enough. <laughs> so, uh, it was a very natural transition. It was to stay outdoor. I was an outdoor girl. Certainly not oriented towards office work like bureaucrats do. Right. And never to be invisible because tennis was all visibility. Visibility, sunshine, nature audience, applause, <laughs> hostility, all those things which came, hostility, adulation, applause, um, out of the comfort zone, all those things that had grown along with me as a tennis player. But as you know, tennis uh, doesn't last. You have to move on. But I was playing not to become a tennis professional. Right. I was playing as a part of extended education. Because for me, sports is very critical. For to me, it gave me an all-rounded uh, education. So I was playing to compete and learn to fail and win and win and fail. But the objective was one day make it to the service. Okay, that's very interesting, ma'am. I guess you just had a calling for the service to help people. That's right. There was a calling. You're right. There was an inner calling. Inner calling was not to keep winning trophies. Uh, I had won them enough, but there was an inner calling to do uh, to achieve a higher purpose. And uh, inner calling was how can I be of value to my society? How can I be not be one of the crowd? Because I was never a one of the crowd. Even when I was playing tennis, friends, I was probably one of the only girls playing competitive tennis in Amritsar. I belong to city of Amritsar. Anybody from Amritsar? Anybody from Punjab? How come nobody from Punjab? <laughs> <coughs> nobody from Punjab? Oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> so, uh, I was the only girl playing competitive tennis uh, in, in, um, from Amritsar. Playing t not in frocks, in, but tennis shorts, right. short hair. And um, uh, the only one traveling all over the country uh, with boys all mm -hmm. the time because the parents were very progressive. <laughs> and they did not see me as one of the traditional faces of an mm -hmm. Indian woman. They did see me as emerging as a life of her own. 
So it was an inner calling that there is a higher purpose in my life, which is to be of value. Before I'm of value to others, I'm value to myself. What am I going to be valuing for myself? Not, so it was never to be one of the crowd. Right. And even in competitive tennis, I was leading the crowds. Uh, the boys could not get reservations. <laughs> I was the one who could break the queues and, uh -huh. uh, and get the uh, railway reservations. Those days, railway reservations were very tough. So as a girl, I could have my way. <laughs> so I really did a lot for the boys. So I was already leading. So there was an inner calling to be of value, constantly value to myself, and then naturally value to the others. That was the higher objective. That's truly inspiring, ma'am. But uh, for all that you said, there certainly isn't a lack of trophies or applause uh, or adoration in your life, ma'am. Your achievements are truly inspiring. So, uh, talking about what you said about being the only girl that actually... Can you stand up and speak? Sure, ma'am. Come. I feel better. I'm more <laughs> better on my feet. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, following on what you said about being uh, one of the only women in tennis, you were also subsequently the first woman to join the officer ranks of the IPS. Being the only woman in a batch of solely men, what were your, uh, you know, your reactions or your experiences, positive, negative? You whatever. ask the boys what their experience was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they would have been intimidated. For me, you, it was one of those people who were traveling in the train, playing competitively, going all together. For me, they were one of the many I'd grown up with. They hadn't grown up persons like that. <laughs> I had grown up with people like that. That was, okay. I think, early beginning. So since I'd grown up, for me, it was hey, one of them. And the best part is that they had already qualified for the services reading my book in the general knowledge. Oh, wow. <laughs> so the, I found that they were pretty overawed. They were very nice, they were very respectful, okay. and they were uh, maybe a little scared. <laughs> that's, that's nice to hear, ma'am. And just as a follow-up, how was the reaction from within your family when you joined the police force? I, my family would have been shocked if I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I was made for this. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, ma'am. It, it, it's, it's wonderful hearing your story like this because uh, there are a lot of cases where a woman's main barrier is her own family from uh, achieving her dreams and it is like icons like you who, you know, No, really I was made by them. them. I was <laughs> made by both my mother and my father. I was made. I oh. grew up. I was brought up and then I took off on my own. So okay. I think I had a great ground for this kind of progressive growth. And very unique, in no way um, doubting my, my precedence. Right, because right. I knew I was leaving a lot of people behind. It's a fact that uh, in my classrooms, when my friends were asked, what would you be? Hmm. They didn't know where they, what would they be. Probably they would be somebody's missus oh. and lose their own name <sighs> and own identity. Whereas I was very, very conscious of my own identity, my own surname, my own ma name. So I think I exactly knew I would have my, retain my identity, carve out my own way, walk the road I want to walk, not that somebody else lays the work for me, provides me the security of right. life. No, I would be the provider. In fact, I grew up to be wanting to be a provider rather than getting provided for. Okay. So I think that is what helped. It's the way you grow up. That's, so that's my true. family was a part of this. It is that's actually really the nice. reason for this. Oh, that's very nice to hear. Not that. the school. <laughs> <laughs> because schools are rather conservative. During my time, the schools were conservative. My schools wasn't inspi inspiring me to be. It was not okay. my school, but the school ethics was strong. Mm -hmm. Value system in my, in my convent school in Amritsar, Sacred Heart, was very strong. Mm -hmm. The value system was very strong, which I got from, from the nuns, they were right. German nuns and Belgian nuns. But um, otherwise, it was not the aspiration. School did not give me the aspiration. Aspiration came from home, but a lot of re reinforced values came from school. Okay, okay. That's interesting, ma'am. Actually, speaking of uh, value systems, you know, you have a, a, a reputation for yourself and you've earned uh, fame for your tough and equal policing. What motivated you to stay true to these values? Uh, I told you school? my schooling. That's your schooling? Is it that? Yes. I think that's where I think probably your school got, the answer got, question got anticipated. I think it's getting grounded a lot. So the roots were deeper and deeper. 
right, coming right. from family, reinforced from school, and then reinforced by me. I, I did start to be living these values, and then looking at what's what's for the deprived. What is what are how are people suffering who left, get left right, behind? Right. Particularly at the time when I was growing up, what's happening to the girls who are getting left behind? What's happening to women who were getting left behind? What's even happening to men who were getting left behind? So that's the, the grounding was so strong that it stood its test. On the contrary, there was a habit of constant nourishment of the ground, of the roots. Nourishment, because there was a strong belief that this is the right way. So I think it's a belief which you develop as a child, as a teenager, and as you grow up. And if you believe that they are the right briefs, nothing shakes them up. No temptation shakes them up. You keep nourish and you have a habit of nourishing them all the time. Right, right, right. They get stronger and stronger and stronger. And they stand out by themselves. You don't do it to stand out. They stand out by themselves. Because them, so they are unique in many ways. Wow, that, that's actually a very nice um, you know, statement that the values that you follow, when you follow them correctly, you don't follow it to stand out, but they stand out. I, that's a very beautiful But I uh, must to. reiterate, that these values need everyday nourishment, everyday okay. nutrition. They, they can be uprooted. Hmm. They can be a, a tsunami <laughs> of uh, situations. They can be tsunamis, but they stand, withstand even those tsunamis. And they continue to, on the contrary, uh, strengthen their roots further that this is what has to survive. Okay. That's, that's wonderful, ma'am. Uh, were there any tsunamis in your life, if I may ask that? Threatened your values? Not one. <laughs> oh. which, which tsunami are we talking about? <laughs> which tsunami? They've been one after the other. I, wow. I've had, and I'm happy I had those. Otherwise, and I grew, grew up for tsunamis. <laughs> I didn't grow up to be in the harbor. I was there meant for the sea. That's beautiful, ma'am. So, considering your long career in policing, um, are there any memorable experience that you know stick with you today, even today, that you would like to share with us? Well, life is all about memories, isn't it? <laughs> I've had a 40 years of Indian policing career, 40 years, and it's just full of uh, memories. And memories are positive, and memories are negative. Which ones do you want, the negative or the positive? <laughs> <laughs> All right, first one, which negative first or positive first? I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> well, negatives are one tsunami after the other. You see, when you are by yourself, this could happen to any one of you, that you, be, you be, may be in a profession when you're just standing out all the time, not because you want to compete and leave others behind, but that's what takes you, your work takes you. Right. Since I believed in giving myself everything, I was there for a purpose. And my purpose in policing was, how can I be in, uh, an anchor for a common man to say, I can go to her and get justice? Right. How can I get a situation where I can go to the police, which she leads, or this police, which has this culture, where I can trust? So this was my purpose, that you can trust me, hmm. and I would. So therefore... When this was my purpose, what was your question? Ah, I, the memories. memories. So in that case, when you were standing alone, uh, apart, because there were many who did not have this purpose. Right. So any one of them, any one of my colleagues, not only my colleagues, even my seniors, who did not have this as a purpose, to be of high value to the person you're appointed for, mm -hmm. serving for, they're bound to be a clash. So they were one after the other. Like, for instance, if I would take care of a lot of welfare of my men, my men, because they were all men all the time, my men, welfare of the men, <laughs> and ensuring that justice happens, and if they've done a genuine uh, 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 an error, unintentional error, that they need protection. For instance, i give you an example. I, there, was a, there, there was a large scale crime in, the, in, in one of my dist early district charges, huge snatchings and robberies at night. And there were people on the, uh, they were committing, and they were all, so it was decided we'll have barricades and blockades. As you see many times, blockades and barriers are there to do regular checks. So we had also done these barricades to check snatchings and robberies. And at those days, then I had a motor, there were motorcycle riders. So my head constable was sitting behind a motorcycle, another constable riding, and they were patrolling. And the, um, the rider, the head constable, had a 303 rifle. 
those days they were not given these short small weapons so they had a 303 rifle behind on the pillion riding and if they were patrolling and obviously uh, while driving there was a bump and there were lots of speed breakers so i think what happened was that while he was driving his rifle his there was a, a loose shot out of his 303 rifle wow. something oh, went no. wrong and it hit somebody who was driving from the car the other side and he got killed he got killed and now the case was challenge was and those days uh, my policing had gained a lot of good popularity a lot of goodwill a lot of trust of the people because a lot of good practices had happened right, right. so we were being almost loved and respected so this happened as accident now the pressure was from from a particular source say register a case of murder against a head constable oh. now i'm talking of a tsunami memorable a negative <laughs> memory and now the entire force and the people looked up to see now the it, but that was a policy that you patrol and you do with the, yeah, with the yeah, whatever yeah. resources you have yeah, yeah it is. so was the murder intentional was the murder even negligent because you've given him only a 303 yeah when we as a government have given him a 303 and 303 is such a blood nozzle and is bound to shake and you have speed breakers and you have a mobike Who's at fault? It's a system at fault, not him. So for me, it was a system at fault, not him. There was even matter went to, up to the parliament. Oh. And there was a pressure on my DIG then to see a case is registered against him for murder and that he's arrested and put behind bars. Oh. And I was called to the parliament. I was called to this particular home minister's office and said, Bot, call attention, motion agya, ye hoga. Bot sara hua. Or oh, no. case register karo. So I said, sir, I won't do it. I can't do it. It's not a mistake. Tell me what's wrong with it. First, you say that you put a barrier in the place. So the barrier is put. You say that patrolling. You put patrolling. You said that you put weapons in the place. You gave me weapons. You gave me 303. You gave me a revolver. You gave me 303. Who's the reason that I gave me a small weapon? Sir, it was my thing, which I would give him. But as a DCP West, I don't have a small weapon to give him. I can only give him 303. So this is the policy of the country. You can remove 303, revolvers, and do it. So there was a huge thing. I did not accede. No case was registered. Nothing happened to my head constable. That's amazing. Nothing happened to my head constable. So I'm only giving you one such example. And I was probably... Little, little older than your age. <laughs> but I had the perp, my, my thing, why must he suffer for something is a policy and something resources, we have made it. He mustn't suffer. We must realize what went wrong as a system. So it happened, it corrected the system. So uh, poor my DIG was all red and blue all, <laughs> all over because he was under pressure. I said, sir, no problem. But I can't register the case, you can remove me. मुझे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता मुझे कहीं और पोस्ट कर दीजिए लेकिन ये गलती मैं नहीं कर सकती ये अन्याय होगा सी फॉर मी इन जस्टिस एंड इन जस्टिस दोस ऑफ द पर्पस ऑफ पुलिसिंग फॉर मी वाज हाउ डू आई इंश्योर जस्टिस टू ऑल वेदर टू माय ओन पीपल माय ओन टीम मेंबर्स हु डिलीवर विद विद हार्ट एंड सोल और नेक प्रॉपर्ली और द पीपल सो आई थिंक दैट वाज द कॉर्नरस्टोन ऑफ माय एंटायर पुलिसिंग दैट्स दैट्स अमेजिंग मैम एंड वेरी इंस्पायरिंग लाइक हाउ यू स्टूड अप टू द मेंबर्स ऑफ पार्लियामेंट Believing in something so strong. So I, this I, is one of the men after there have been many, many tsunamis. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but I, was, I became an open book. Right. Now I was an open book. Iske staff member ko, ya iske kaam mein, injustice karne ke liye dabao dal ke kuch karana hai, to nahi karbao hai. That's amazing. Nahi karbao hai. That is what built my reputation. And that stood me in good stead. But it also threw me, gave me lots of challenges, which I welcomed. Because they have to come because they're standing alone by themselves. You know, they're standing out as, as examples or as beacons or, or something which is not familiar with. So this is what happened, but they have good memories too. <laughs> <laughs> the good memories, I think, were all the way when I celebrated all my Diwali festivals, all my birthdays with my team members, policemen that's, that's and their families. And that's how they were, they thoroughly loved them. We all, so policemen, they don't know, it was breaking hierarchies all the time. 
it was uh, uh, because for me the they were the ones who were sacrificing for the, for all of us to make it good so all my happy moments and celebrations which were in my life were always spent till the last day of my service with rank and file that's beautiful man that sounds very nice a beautiful camaraderie amongst the uh, police uh, i'd like you to recollect one memory for us ma'am the your one of your most famous achievements converting tihar jail to tihar ashram what what made you do this ma'am go against conventional ideology and tihar jail was an unwanted uh, was a posting as a no 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 nobody wanted to go there and uh, it was considered as as a hell hole posting because there's nothing but hell inside and uh, 10000 aggrieved people sick mentally sick revengeful uh, angry abusive addicts murderers rapists terrorists thieves gangsters this was the uh, profile of my 10000 prisoners so nobody wanted to work, go and work with them and when there was nothing else uh, coming my way or i was waiting for a posting for several months and then the auditor saying i was waiting for a posting but i had to be paid so they were because they were not couldn't find a posting for me because every time they found a posting for me it's on record i know i'm on record <laughs> uh, the <clears throat> somebody would put a put in a political jack and oh. uh, get me replaced and said we oh, want wow. this position so while i would not put, do these jacking the uh, i was not having getting a posting so one day the accountant general said how can you continue to pay an officer for months together who is not at work so they found this prison posting vacant and this because nobody was going there right. and nobody would put a jack right right see so i was posted there okay. so when i was posted there in my heart of hearts my inside told me i was going to the right place oh. because i belong to the downtrodden nice. i belong to people who need us so <laughs> therefore and i knew them I have a, as a cop i knew uh, i was dealing with them arresting them interrogating them so i knew them and i knew what was what had gone wrong with them because my habit as a police officer every day was to find out the why of the crime why did they particularly put, they committed a crime basically to improve my policing where did we go wrong that he could commit a crime or where did the family go wrong the society go wrong i was very cus- inquisitive right. i was basically a learner at heart always right. so <clears throat> i uh, I went there, and the rest is history. That first day, I'll tell you my first day of the prison. First day when I walked into the prison. First of all, no inspector general ever walked walked the prison. They always had the guard and the British guard and and everything along. And I just told one of my at- attendant, "Ye lo meri diary, ye lo mera pen pakro mere saath chalo." And I didn't wear a uniform. I wore a same kind of a dress, simple dress, and. Uh, put on my tennis shoes because i was now wanting to walk the prison okay because you don't drive the prison you walk right. inside the prison so i was willing to walk the prison back to my field work <laughs> back to my being on the job right back, right. back to on my feet so i start to walk when i entered the prison you know the prison has let's say i, I define to you this gate and let's say this gate let's defi- make make it look like a prison okay okay <laughs> so there's a gate here and there's a gate here and this is called the duty so the prisoners on that side and the society's road is on this side prisoners on this side they enter through this gate and they this is a holding place called the duty so they hold on and while the their names etc are recorded and once this all attendance is taken then they one then that gate closes that gate closes so that no entrant further comes this gate opens and now that they've been all sanitized or whatever their names the roll calls have been taken they go and they enter a jail van okay oh. now i have entered as inspector general at 9 am the first day of my prison i <laughs> enter from here okay <laughs> so we enter right? okay <laughs> so we enter the prison imagine if you were my constable that time <laughs> <laughs> so i do have Me, you have what? I do have a pen and pad with me. Yeah, yeah, you have it. But, <laughs> ah, pen and. But this is too modern. Okay, <laughs> so we imagine we both entered, and you are right behind me, and I'm walking in, and these people are all waiting here, and guess what? The first time see a woman, Inspector General, uh, in the prison, and they're all waiting. Now, what do I do? <laughs> I see so many faces. These men, I see them. I say, do I say namaste? <laughs> 
डू आई से कैसे हैं आप आई ना इधर से कैसे हैं आप मुझे पता ही कैसे हैं तो नमस्ते क्यों बोलूँ सो आई सेड सो आई जस्ट स्टार्ट टू वंडर वो डू आई डू और आई हैड ऑप्शन चलो इधर चलो एंड एंड द गार्ड वुड ओपन द डोर एंड आई गो सो दैट मीन्स यू एंड आई जस्ट वॉक थ्रू पुट द कास्ट मस्ट साइड एंड गो दे वर थ्री ऑप्शन I exercised the fourth option. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the three, three is neither namaste nor kaise hain nor se aise chalo. I walked to them. I walked to them, and I said, "Ap prathna karte? Sare khade hoke? Prathna karte? Koi nahi bola? This start to suddenly, suddenly wonder. I G speaking to us." That to a woman's voice for the first time inside a prison. <laughs> so I said, "Ap prathna karte." And when I saw this guard of mine, he said, <laughs> "So I said, 'So I, chup kyu hai? Bol kyu nahi rahe?'" So I said, "I have said, I 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 have said, तो आई सेड अच्छा प्रार्थना करोगे सी आई चेंज माय प्रार्थना करते हो देन इसे प्रार्थना करोगे सो आई सेड आओ मिलके करो आंखें बंद हाथ जोड़ो मैं आपके साथ प्रार्थना करूंगी एंड वी स्टार्ट टू सेइंग ए मालिक तेरे बंदे हम ऐसे हो हमारे करम नेकी पर चले बधी पर टले ताकि हंसते हुए निकले दम एंड वी सेंग द होल सॉन्ग आई न्यू दिस सॉन्ग बाय हार्ट they also knew it because this is almost the prayer of the every prison and then i walked away i left them in that feeling of the prayer now you might ask me why did i do this how did i come it just spurred on the spur what is it that they need that's the sensitivity of leadership leadership teaches you to be sensitive and to get intuitively what is the situation is not in the book So remember you are all going to be leaders you have to be very intuitive you never know nothing may be written in the book but you got to sense it you got to sense it with your heart heart that's called the high emotional quotient it's and a spiritual quotient both emotional quotient and the spiritual quotient is very vital to leadership that is what happened and after that i left i went out and what did i say? first my first communication was set, was settled they now knew here is a person who's come but she's talking about reform she's talking about inner reform she's talking of transformation she's not talking kya crime kiya tumne aaya idhar ab main tumhe bataungi karne ab tujhe sabak se kahungi ab aaya na tu jail mein main police officer hu mujhe pata hai tujhe kya karna hai i never did that i just said prarthna karte ho sure enough every evening the prison had a prarthna I used to assemble with the uh, 12, two to thousand gatherings of a Malik Tere Bande. Every month, two years I spent in the prison. Not an evening I missed saying this prayer with prisoners every day. That's Not amazing. Man. And then of that's, course, that's just amazing. The rest of the programs followed. All of them went to school inside the prison. All of them went to school inside the prison from nine to eleven with borrowed school books. Used school books were donated. They all went to class inside. They all went to pravachan they all did an evening prarthna they all went to meditation programs they all did sports they all celebrated festivals we have through that time a model indian prison reform system that's amazing man it's a, and that is what took me to the western prisons to explain to them nobody can copy this system why because so culturally rooted it's indian culture rooted it's a very indian and modern way at the same time traditional and modern you know uh, could, uh i i feel like a lot of these uh, moves that you talked about prayer meditation is something that we all can also follow uh, i mean we're not prisoners all over here <laughs> hopefully no, we are prisoners within remember there are prisoners within walls we are all prisoners of our own thinking negativity and positivity okay. we are all in fact we all build walls around us also in many many ways so we are prisoners of our own habits attitudes beliefs we are all prisoners within so they had you saw the they were doubly present 
they are the walls and they were present within but right. we can break both we we don't have those walls but we create our own walls that's 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 very important to remember man that's very important so i that brings me to my next question uh, I, i watched your ted talk recently which you had given it, it's it's a, it's an amazing ted talk very inspiring talk in which you had mentioned that the pattern of indian policing should be the power to correct power to prevent and power to detect as opposed to the earlier of just power to detect and power to punish what what made you bring this up what what is the difference between the two because i believe in the power of prevention as a, as a girl as a growing up student i always looked at prevention first could this have been prevented that means i was basically by nature prevent an agony prevent a wrong prevent a suffering prevent an incident and if something happened i have it by instinctively saying i think that's another habit if you youngsters can take along is always look at was this preventable okay. because if you prevent you don't detect there's no detection because you've already true, prevented yeah. and there's no agony and there's no further trials etc so all that effort has gone uh, uh, has been saved so if you believe in the power of prevention whether as an official as a leader as a student as a citizen if you start believing it's like prevention when you're driving you can prevent an accident by right. being safe yourself but after that still something can happen but you can prevent that's true it's the way you way you prepare you if you use your time better you're preventing a failure or you pre- you are enabling better marks so prevention of failure is in your hands so i believe in policing prevention this is actually if we start all believing around the world now i look at crime reports in the policing and i thought i said i knew this was pre- like for instance let let's look at at the moment israel hamas war right it's pre- it was preventable oh clearly preventable okay. because when you start believing in prevention it was preventable right, right why if you start listening to what's happening were they not getting signals that this is what's happening it's as ble- as the pep- newspapers say okay. yeah. were they not getting signals that this is happening in the gaza strip or this is what's happening by the hamas they were getting signals israelis were getting signals i'm going exactly by so far what has been reported what yeah. if they adapted upon that what if they started to identify that there are so many whole township of tunnels below why could they not work then rather than doing it now so it's a clearly a case of where it was preventable if you take timely action on what's feeding you what's informations coming you coming to you the sensible and wise person is one who senses early on what could go wrong that's that's you a very what? important point there's a bird here they are reading about a particular bird birds have a great sense of uh, a sense of prevention Oh. they leave a particular place when a hurricane still far away oh yeah i yeah, yeah. you read it yeah. i read it earth animal sensing earthquakes or natural disasters animal sense yeah. that bird goes miles across the continents over the sea and they st- they were doing a research study why did this these birds leave earlier then they left last year and they were researching and why did they leave the the the, the forest earlier and the weather uh, weather forecast was it's not going to be a very heavy hurricane they were wrong it was a huge one it was devastating birds had sensed it's going to be devastating and they left nature has gifted animals with this kind of intuitive sense we have prevented ours we've suppressed it we've not honed it we've not fine tuned this intuition so right. that's why we depend on more other material technology resources technology has its limits but the animal world has not got impacted by this kind of technology they still continuing to li- go by their intuitive inherited um, uh, gift by right, nature right, right. so i think if policing goes goes on prevention crime prevention by the young boys and rapists boys what happens are the boys born rapists the, those boys who commit rapes for the young girls they are Definitely not born not. rapists Definitely not, yeah. they are out of control they've just yeah. gone on the street they've not had upbringing they've not had they got dropped out teacher did not bring them back parents did not ask them back parents gave them money parents did not check when did you why do you not come back home early or if at this all these things are done they were preventable so i would believe crime is preventable to a large extent every time i look at it you can work backwards daud ibrahim one of the biggest started as an ordinary drug smuggler oh ordinary drugs drug smuggler 
ordinary small drug smuggler. What happens in crime prevention? When such a commit commission happens, he's on bail, let's say. Why he is not under watch when he's on bail? Why his bail was not cancelled when he commits another crime? So had his bail been not had been cancelled, he would not have continued to multiply, 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 and see see the cost to the world and to us because that 2611 happened. That's true. Yeah. So I would say many, many crimes. If you look at, if in your life, if you get into this habit, was this incident preventable? If you work start backwards, say, oh yes, I, if I could do the following, this was preventable. And that's what happened. So I believe crime prevention should become a priority. And then, if nothing still works, you detect. And good detection again is prevention. Because when you detect the person, the right person you catch, you are preventing further recycling. Yes. And then if you work on prison reforms, you further work on him in the prison. And when he comes out dry cleaned, it's prevention. So prevention and detection, they go hand in hand. Problem is, we work on detection. It's like medicine. It's like uh, what you can prevent by medicine surgery or you do an early prevention. So I believe in policing strongly and that has been my strength in policing, has been crime prevention. And friends, it is this which brought me the Max Award in 1994. It was this. It was prevention, the power of prevention, the power to correct and power to get things done. That's, that's beautiful, man. This is the first time an international body recognized the power of prevention. I wasn't shooting down people. Of course, I, I had terrorist, act, uh, terrorist encounters. And I did uh, uh, deal with them effectively and deal with them if, um, when it didn't do shoot and even kill. It was law and orders many. But those are not in my hands to early prevent. What is in your hands to early prevent, you are responsible. That's, that's very that's something very important for all of us to keep in mind, definitely. Uh, so ma'am, I feel like I've maybe bored you a bit asking you a lot about your police career. So I'd like to ask you... No, no you're not bored me. You're at, at home. <laughs> I'm at home. I, I'd like to ask you a question about your lieutenant governorship. Uh, I'm sorry, it's still related to policing though. <laughs> so being a lieutenant governor, uh, being in government uh, with the power to affect policy versus uh, being a policewoman on the ground uh, directly fighting crime. How does that change your perception of crime or how the way that you fight crime? You see, when, when I got into that position as lieutenant governor, I had the, entire, I had the people. Right. I had these services. I had uh, these officials. The new element which got acted was the politicians. Right. Earlier, I used to deal uh, with a politician. <laughs> or two politicians. <laughs> now I had the whole cabinet. <laughs> and then I had the whole elected assembly breathing down my neck. <laughs> so that was a new element which I had to deal with, which was something different and unique. Bureaucrats, I knew how they work because I'm part of the bureaucracy. People I had dealt with because of the policing I did. No problem. Or difficult people also in prisons. But this constituency was really <laughs> tough. Really tough. <laughs> really tough. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever get some time to read the easy time, read the book Fearless Governance. You will read about them amazingly. You read about how they were selling away Pondicherry. Pondicherry was on sale by some of them, and it's written in the book, so I'm not saying it for the first time. And none of them have taken me to the courts, <laughs> because I've said it with evidence. And I'm an evidence-driven person. And whatever I do and write and save, I do save. I have a habit of documentation. I have a very powerful habit. That's a very important, valuable habit, if you can take away from me. I have a documentation from my first day as a national junior champion of 16-year-old news clipping till now. Oh, wow. I've retained my whole library in Lake. Fortunately for me, it went to digitization <laughs> and it's all digital now. So I have a very good documentation. So whatever I did as Lieutenant Governor, it was getting documented very carefully. So when I decided to finally write the book, I had entire documents of my correspondence with these, these honorable politicians, <laughs> honorable ministers. How dishonorable were they? All. And when I say dishonorable, it's evidence on the. They were buying up people's lands who were uh, 
senior citizens, French who'd gone to Paris, not, in, not coming back for their farmland. So they would call a cop and say, Ye, zameen ko, make an entry and now say, this is ours, this is yours. So take the help of the police and get it sold. So all this was happening plentifully. Houses being forcibly evacuated, never being available for appointments, uh, ap files being cleared by the lieutenant governor, they're sitting on them. So I created systems by which, so all that, all the, see the point is, I started with the question is, why am I here? And it said that the moment you know the why, you have the doors open. There's no limit. I knew why am I here? Why am I here? It's not because somebody has trusted me, the Prime Minister has trusted me to say go and take charge and it's a great position. No, I'm here to serve the people of Puducherry and correct any wrong which I see and see that the budget of the Puducherry government goes to the people for its meant and that justice is delivered and that they trust the government, right? So, and that the people, employees start feeling involved into their work and start feeling accountable. This is my purpose. My purpose was to see Puducherry serves, governs, effect trustworthily, honestly, with accountability. Now, whoever breaks the trust, empowerment and accountability, then gets suffered. So I put in lots of systems in place, the grievance redressal systems. The, the, the uh, Raj Nivas became an open house to meet people. Every day from four to six, you could walk into the Raj Nivas and meet me and I would stand and listen to them and we would document every grievance redressal, follow up every, every grievance. We had a control room number where you can inform complaints. We created a model of good governance. This is what irked the honorable politicians. It really disturbed them because it broke their monopolies. And when it broke their monopolies, there was we and they. And every time we came to Madras High Court, every time we came to Madras High Court challenge this decision over this, the good news is that since the cent these were central government policies also because Pondicherry is a union territory. The central government also was defending its policies while I'm defending my implementation from Pondicherry. They were defending it from government of India. Every time the Madras High Court ruled them down and brought us up. But in the Moses, we were losing a lot of time and there was a lot of hostility and a lot of bad press. And the media would report as they said, as we said, as they said, it was always a tennis battle. It was all the battle, <laughs> all the time. But since I had the, uh, I had the de facto, I had the capability, I had the stamina. So for me, it was playing my life, I think on a canvas which was larger, but into an area which wanted to play the game, but did not know how to play at all because they were total failures and they were very disturbed that they were losing their battle all the time. So for me, it was a, it was a great experience. But all I can say is, if you go to Pondicherry, if you go to... Let me tell you one thing very interesting. The other day, a small boy came to see me. Oh, I was coming down. I was lovely, coming from Chandigarh and a little boy came. Ma'am, I know you. Can I have a photograph with you? I said, sure. You want a photograph? Sure. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the junior, the junior said, Ma'am, can we have a selfie or a photograph? I said, yes. He said, I said, so? Ma'am, I know you've done some interesting work in Pondicherry. I said, oh, he was seven years old. I said, how do you know? He said, ma'am, I went to Pondicherry and I Googled Pondicherry. <laughs> and when I Googled and I said, who's the left-hand governor? It, your name came. And it also said, following things were done during her time. Wow. Imagine, he, as a seven-year-old, picked it up from Google, I, that I was there and following right things happened. This is now history in Puducherry. That's amazing, man. When a child can come up to you and tell you your own achievements to you. What did you say? When a child can come up to you and tell your own achievements to you, that's, that's truly, ins that would be ha very like heartening and inspiring to see. Right? That's very nice, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, you mentioned about your book and that's a great segue because I had been meaning to ask you about it uh, anyways. So, what inspired you to write this book and put down your thoughts? You know, it's you were fighting a lot and you, what made you write a book? If I don't write, how would you get to know? <laughs> it was my duty to write. And I did it out of sense of love, belonging, joy and also sense of responsibility because people contributed hugely, hugely 
to what happened. But I owed it to the history of Puducherry to document what happened those five years, how we turned it around, a situation. So one turnaround came and after the, but the how, the why, the process is all documented. So therefore, at any stage, when is, one is looking at leadership concept, principles, the how and the why and the purpose, you can go back. Otherwise, how much can I tell you in, in one minute? That's true. Uh, Ma'am, that brings me to one of my last few questions. Uh, today is Navajoti Day, as you would obviously yes, know. It is. Over 30 years ago on this day, uh, Ma'am set up the Navajoti India Foundation, which helps fight against drug abuse. And, the, and another famous uh, foundation that you set up is the India Vision Foundation, helping in reform and women empowerment and development. <laughs> these two are very noble initiatives. Uh, could you recount your experiences in setting these up and bringing them up? I'm sure there would have been challenges I'm glad well. he's asked me this question because this is quite relevant for all of you. And all of you can in your lives do what I did, experiment, and it worked wonders for me. In fact, it's the source of joy to me at this age of my life. When I was growing up like you, and I was sensitive and I was seeing problems around it, I was looking at situations, I was looking at prevention. And when I saw drug at little, little school children selling drugs and women selling drugs for their livelihood, I saw the reason. They were not going to school and women had no livelihood, etc. And government was ignoring them because they were not a vote bank. They were all migrants coming from Bihar, uh, UP nearby, and they were all in Jogi Jompri, JJ colonies, clusters. Nobody bothered, but they were crime infested and police men could not walk those because they would get beaten up. I walked it. That's the advantage of being a woman. That was a clear advantage of being a woman, where I walked this, uh, this place and started to connect with these women and said, Aap ye crime chodoge? Ha ma'am, to hume roti rozi do na? To hume laungi. Bacho ko school jane doge? Ha ma'am, ye bache bhi humare liye kamate hain. Inke liye humare roti rozi do na? To hume dungi. I used to live, my work was ne uh, near town hall in Chandni Chowk, etc. What did I do? I expanded the area of my influence. I'm using the word again. I expanded the area of my influence. And all of you in your lives are already influential in your own ways, whether in your own villages, in your neighborhoods, in your townships, in your schools, in your colleges, you are. And as you go, grow in your jobs, you will be. Your companies will be, your corporate social responsibilities will be. If you remain sensitive to issues Something will touch you and make you do more. It goes beyond your, beyond your biodata, uh, sorry, profiles, job profiles. It will stretch you beyond. And maybe you associate yourself with somebody or you start something for your own, in your own. It's up to you, each one of you. I did that. And in 1986, I set up this foundation. When I start to see this happen, Navjyoti was, because I named it Navjyoti, it's called Navjyoti, New Jyoti. And we started schools, we started vocational schools, etc. And women went to work, they start to earn a livelihood. Children went to school, we opened more schools. We all did it in collaboration with the government of the day. And also with many donors around it. It was expanding my area of influence. How would somebody, why would somebody say no to me for a cause? Right? So I was not asking anything for myself. I'm, ask, I'm only becoming a bridge between the have and the have not. You are all a bridge today between the have and the have nots. In your lives, if you start being these bridges, you will see the country changing. And you're all going to be belong to great corporates or government. Wherever you be, you will be a bridge between a have and a have not. I became a have not, a, a bridge. And believe me, it's a banyan tree today. I put it on my Twitter handle. If you want to go to my Twitter handle, you will see testimonials today of these children. You will see fact sheets of my foundation, how thousands of people, men, women, children, seniors, etc., benefiting by this work. It's, and today it's given me a higher purpose. It's given me a higher purpose in life because I can devote so much more time and children are today in artificial intelligence. These poor rickshaw pullers, etc., these children, first learners, are into learning. And we are, what are we doing? We are creating a better demographic dividend for this country. So all of our CC, I have not spent any money, but I invested my precious time and energy and love and my f feeling of gr giving and gratitude, whatever that comes with it. And today it's a banyan tree. And you know, these are living going to be beyond me. 
these schools will go beyond go on and on because they are into their own infrastructures their own buildings because donors came and donated land then we built up a building family also stepped in so this is what i'm saying all of you remember to do what i did it in a small way in 1988 when i started to look at the problem looked at the solution found out found out who are the possible way people who can be part of the solution made them all made coalitions made collaborations and created systems and then kept nurturing them kept nourishing them kept looking even when i'm posted around i kept working with them found out the professionals to run found out resources you know it's a seed sown so never ever when you sow a seed you'll say itni der lagega phal dene mein so no tree today would have come would have been fruit bearing today if somebody had not sown the seed then and today we are bearing we are sharing those fruits in your life if you have to take away from here my navjyoti indian division go to my twitter handle today re- see the fact sheets see the testimonials how little little children are saying what they've done that all started from nothing just sensitivity of heart to say i have the capacity to stretch myself to do more for others and that's what happened and this is how india vision also came up in my prison assignment when no children children were going to school i started to send them to school those children went to boarding schools etc and some of those children now are well they saved the next victim because otherwise they would have got lost boys and girls so friends there is a scope in whatever you do start looking around i'm not saying do this i will say do where your heart takes you and then you nourish and you nurture and stay with it and keep persevering with it and keep organically uh, uh, feeding it so that it continues to and grow with you by the way whatever you do now it will grow with you and th- you will see them growing together and one day you would like to dedicate yourself probably for such causes more and more that's that's wonderful man <laughs> it is truly testament to the fact of how one person can change the lives of so many millions let's hope your words really help us help others get through their own tsunamis ma'am that brings me to my last question uh, you know you're uh, you're really putting us to shame by taking this interview standing how do you no no i love this prof- i prefer this how do you do it how do you maintain such a healthy lifestyle at your age i eat less <laughs> <laughs> honestly i eat less i eat less than i need but i eat right that's that's amazing and that's i eat right simple. amount but i eat less than i need that's, that's, that's and i eat the right kind of food <laughs> <laughs> that's very simple and i exercise advice. daily <laughs> <laughs> and i do a yoga regularly and i do meditation <laughs> see i'm giving you all these things these are all so it's not just physical it's not just physical it's also what is fitness is here so you got to work on mind body soul and it's also your heart <laughs> so i think look at spiritual quotient as, as it's always said it, uh, all these sq eq iq all of you know in your all your examinations you've all passed <laughs> yeah. so i think this is it if you work on mind body soul you see you'll take get taken care of and the time to have these habits is now not a day late you will reap the rewards throughout your life if you become aware awareness what am i eating what am i thinking what am i saying what am i doing what am i watching what am i watching where am i spending my time etc and uh, how am i saying where am i thinking where, who are my friends if if you start looking at your uh, environment carefully being being very highly you see the meditation is not eyes closed meditation is about heightened awareness where you are becoming aware of how you're using your five senses which is the all your five senses if you become aware of that you stay uh, prevent it you prevent yourself from many tsunamis thank you man that was a very simple advice to follow a very simple end to a wonderful fireside chat with you ma'am uh, thank you so much is there any last few words that you'd like to share with us yeah quickly uh, can i have my phone i have a few points for you i thought of you on my flight and i'll quickly give them to you as your career guidance i thought of you and i said okay <laughs> well you'll stay a child at heart if you eat less <laughs> now look i have a three three cur- these few career advices for you and i thought of you while i was on the flight it just came to my mind number 1 lift others and become the ladder this is what happened in my life i became a ladder and i kept making others climb i make i made others grow 
like Navjodi and I, I became a ladder where others started to grow. So lift others because you're all going to be in good positions. Don't be worried about yourself when you lift others. You don't get left behind. You will move up. So lift others and you become the ladder. Number one message. Number two, in a celebration when you are, be in the back. But in a crisis, be in the front. This is my second suggestion with you, is as you grow, look for, not celebration, maybe aage, a crisis mein bhaag gai. No, no. Crisis mein aage. Celebration mein toh mein hoon na, peechhe taali baja ra. So, nahi nahi, tum aage hao na, haan, koi baat nahi. Tum enjoy karo. But, so celebration, be behind. But when a crisis, I'm here for you. Whether it's personal or professional. Third, leave everyone and everything better than you found them. So may I repeat? Leave everyone and everything better. Everything. Leave everyone, everything. Your chairs, your furniture, your rooms, <laughs> office, your house, your rooms, everything. Leave everyone and everything better than you found them. And last but not the least, which is my motto, work on your life not in your life. <laughs> work. So that means you've never worked, basically. You are working on your life. When you live a lifestyle, you're working on your life. Work is happening, but you're working on your life. You're not working in your life. I've not worked in my life. I've only worked on my life. That's my message to you. This is how. Work on your lives all your time. Work on yourselves. Work will continue to happen by itself. Wish you well. I thought these are four little thoughts I had with you while I was on the flight. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for that inspiring and amazing fireside chat. I would just like to invite our student head to give a token of appreciation to Dr. Kiran Bedi and a special gift from our gratitude partner, Wet Tree. Wet Tree is a premium gifting brand renowned for offering an exceptional range of gifts suitable for any occasion. Everyone, please remain seated. We'll, we'll all come in the selfie, don't worry. Guess what? I'm going to Pondicherry. <laughs> and guess what? Here. Guess what for what? Here. Guess what for what? No. Second guess. Huh? 
second guess navjyoti is in delhi meet the governor ma'am people have a few that's guesses that's a good idea i'll take an appointment <laughs> any other idea to enjoy the place Th second Me meet the public okay any other idea why am i there you can't even guess huh huh any other aurobindo ashram yes i will go but i'm not going for the aurobindo ashram but i will go to the aurobindo ashram because without going to the aurobindo ashram pondicherry visit is never complete is never blessed i'll tell you why i'm going during my governorship we had thrown open the governor's office for internships and we had met 13 interns at that time 13 interns working with me at the rajnivas directly they could attend my meetings they could see many things and they could see all the deliberations so one of them called krithik kailash has written a book called people's governor oh, wow. and that book that book is being released tomorrow in pondicherry and do you know why i accepted your invitation <laughs> this gave me a reason to go to pondicherry <laughs> so i combined the iit invitation and that date of pre, uh, book release together so from straight here spend the night there tomorrow release the book and then travel back to delhi so internship book i think probably ever and he's written the people's governor he's written a direct experience of what he learned what he saw and he's by the way a law student and is uh, hoping to be joining the judiciary he's got his heart at the right place he's i want to be a judge i want to do justice uh, so he's written this book the people's governor i do not know what he's written so let's see what happens tomorrow <laughs> thank you bodhi in sanskrit means perfect wisdom so they giving me <laughs> they giving me little more needed wisdom <laughs> thank you may you all also receive such awards all your life many many more all of you each one of you that's my blessing for you may each one of you receive such awards in your life may you remain worthy of them more and more because look you are very precious for all of us each one of you is very precious for this country for your family and for us because you are going to be the transformers and the change makers of this country as as brilliant engineers you will be taking the indian trill economy to 5 trillion by the next year or or so by your innovations <laughs> by your innovations by your creativity <laughs> by your it, that's that's all expected from you in fact you should all know what I, thank you what are you going to create In fact each one of you should stand up to say main ye create karungi main ye create karunga ye hai ex export ye hai import karte ye import band karke manufacture karunga that's what is expected of you each one of you and particularly certainly for the iit uh, faculties iit students so i wish you all one by one when i hear iit student has done this i would say to hona hi tha to hona hi tha that's what they meant for so i pray that each one of you achieve the Uh, ambitions and aspirations you set out for yourselves as i said set out a higher purpose and you will all achieve it there is no stopping you when you know the why the door opens for you thank you i'm just as a last request i would like you to sign our speaker notebook i would uh, could you please sign our speaker notebook we would also like to extend our gratitude to b cabs our transport partner for being with us today uh, b cabs the premium and luxury car rental provider catering to corporations and mncs all over india b cabs vehicles are kept in excellent condition and the rental process has been free What should I write? <laughs> 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 
negative is gone it's turned into positive so much what do i write ha huh? fourth ma'am you gave us four quotes your fifth four quote quotes, if you could write quote. it I've written keep taking the community with you wherever you go when you do this keep taking the community means keep taking the interest of the people that's what i said have you read, recently read a book called from Raghur, dr raguram he's written a book called three third pillar he's written a very beautiful book called third pillar and his third pillar exactly this he says how the world the the state and the corporate world or the business world has left community behind had we had we kept the community along we would have been all more equitable in our society today we would have been more just society the corporate the, in its world kept growing the government continued see the today's prime minister why is he becoming popular today if you ask me dispassionately because he's bringing community along when he gives ujwala to the people when he gives water to the people when he goes giving farmers work up, he's taking community along so he's doing a bottom up which was left behind and that's why he's getting in, he's becoming endearing so keep the community along you are all going to be part of the corporate world or in government take the community along what did i do what's the secret of my service is i took the community along I took the people of Pondicherry along. I took my uh, members of the service along. I worked with their families along. I went uh, held town hall meetings along. People along. I did not read the third pillar of Dr. Raghuram. He wrote the third pillar, and he said the third pillar is the community. And that's why I said, keep taking the community with you wherever you go. So whatever work you do, a private sector or government sector, keep taking the community along. when i told you the first negative memory i told you what did i do i took my entire district police along my entire manpower along so that they would see mai galat murder case nahi register karungi you be brave to continue to do crime prevention i took them along so remember if you keep this in mind in all that you do and take the nation along when you take community along you take nation along that means all your work which you do will be always nation first india first and you will see the way things it, and when we do this everybody is a beneficiary when i do it in india first you benefit when you do india first i benefit it's like rights and responsibilities so focus on responsibilities you get your rights thank you thank you ma'am